Good morning. It's Monday. Monday. Monday, June 21st. June 21st. Is that the first day of summer? June is today the first day of summer? I don't know. <clears throat> I think it's in June. Well, I don't know. Guess we'll find out. I might have to check that later. Uh, we'll see if anybody shows up today. Definitely summer and not as busy. Um, on here, um, there's a lot of people on Facebook right now, I saw, but I'm <clears throat> not sure uh, how many are going to be on here this morning. But uh, there's a couple of you signing on. So. Miss Joyce and Heidi, and hi neighbor, Miss Faye's on here, so, <clears throat> so two or more gathered together, we're good, right, <clears throat> <clears throat> well, I hope everybody had a good weekend, we did, and I got a lot of things uh, accomplished too, and, uh, <clears throat> um, there goes my wife, sending me texts, right in the middle of my thing. So, hey, Randy, good to see you back on here. So, all right, <clears throat> well, let's get into this and uh, then we can be done and moving forward in the day, right? So, a beautiful day. Now the sun's trying to peek out. It's all nice and cool today and uh, wet today. I heard it raining last night around midnight or so. And, uh, <clears throat> That's good. We'll take all the rain we can get. And <clears throat> not supposed to be as hot today either. So that's nice. But <clears throat> so I, in, in my uh, devotions um, this morning, I actually kind of came up with a, <laughs> with a, a message. And sometimes that happens. I don't, I don't go looking for that. But uh, sometimes the Lord just lays one out there and it would be kind of a long message just because of the different passages, but uh, some some character uh, issues that we ought to have and and uh, what we ought to be doing and, and how we ought to be conducting ourselves. And, and uh, the first one that I read started off in Proverbs with uh, Chapel's little devotional. And just uh, another encouragement again, and I've used this several times this year already in my devotions, reading in Proverbs to just be content, be content with what we have, and and uh, it it tells us in in uh, Proverbs twenty one verse seventeen it says, "He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man; he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich." And so, first of all, it's just a uh, uh, an encouragement to all of us as as believers to be content with what we have. I read there, it was mentioning some kind of a study that had been done, and it didn't matter whether if a person made $25,000 a year, they they were asking, you know, what what is going to give you security, what's going to bring you, you know, your contentedness in your life, and they said, "Well, I need to double my salary to twenty-five thousand. Somebody had a hundred thousand dollars salary. What, what is it that you need? We need another hundred thousand a year. So, uh, it, and, they, and they said it was almost that way uh, across the board. So, and, and people just never satisfied with with what they have. And let's be content. Let's be content with with what we have, and maybe live a little simpler, and then." We, we find that maybe there won't be so much pressure on us and uh, you can actually enjoy your life a little more. So anyway, that was the first thing that I saw in, in characteristics of, of a believer in, in my life. These are things that I need in my life. I need to learn to be content. And then <clears throat> this was just, a, a, this one was an encouragement. So they're going to kind of jump around here, okay, but... We'll, we'll, I'll bring out the character issues as we go, but I was also reading in Spurgeon this morning, and and uh, Paul wrote to Timothy in, in 2 Timothy and getting ready to die. I mean, this was kind of his swan song, and 
and he's wanting to um, he encourage Timothy before he goes. And this is what he says in 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. He, he encourages him through verse 19 is what I want to read. But study to show thyself approved unto God. So first thing, if we're a believer, then we need to study the word of God. And uh, as your pastor, I better be a student of the word and to uh, understand what the word says and, and to do my best to explain the word and to uh, help us to apply it and give you some ideas of application and, and uh, do that. So, but here he is, he's, he's encouraging all of us, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. I, I think that, <clears throat> yeah, that's good, Todd. I like that too. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? You, you, you don't plan to be rich. You get out of bed every day to make sure I'm not broke. I, I like that, but and in and, and on on that too is whatever we have, we use it to honor and glorify God, right? Uh, I mean, if God gives some people more than others, that's okay, but it is a responsibility. We we know that, and and we need to to be good at uh, stewards of what we have, and 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 in that being a good steward, we also need to be a good steward in reading the Word of God, and. <clears throat> avoid those profane and vain babblings. And, and sometimes I think, <clears throat> I think those can be when, when you're studying the word of God and, and you have people just tell you, well, I feel like this is what it means to me. Oh, honestly, that, that's not application. Okay. That, that's a, that's a dangerous way to apply the word of God. You need to read the word of God. You need to understand the context of it. You need to understand who he was writing it to, why he was writing, when he was writing. I mean, those things are, are important. You need to, to know all of those things. And then in the context, read the whole chapter if you need to, to keep it all those things in context, because it does mean what it means. I mean, it's black and white, right? And so you take what it means and you take it in the context that it is, and then you apply it to your life according to that context. When when we start applying because this is what we feel like it means to us, then it, it becomes some mystical thing that, um, it, well, it, it 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 just doesn't work, okay? And, and you can you can get led astray by your own heart, thinking and trying to let your heart uh, interpret the word of God, and and you need to allow God and let God's word interpret itself, and so. <clears throat> something that was a reminder to me. But, and then it goes and it says, and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. So there are those that are trying to lead people astray. We know that. And it says, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So there are always those that are out there doing that battle, right? And, and trying to overthrow the faith of some. However, this is the verse that I wanted to, to give thought to. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So here, we, we look, if you know Christ, then don't live in a, in, in a life of sin, okay? Confess it and move on and live victoriously. And we need to deal with that. But and and the world is trying to to bring us down all the time, and and we have those that are false teachers trying to bring you down all the time, and and we need to understand that the foundation of the of God standeth sure. Uh, I mean that I, I am grateful for that. I, I was thinking of this as I was reading this, and and <clears throat> I'm so grateful that God doesn't change. I'm grateful that. The word of God never changes. It's alive and, and it's applicable to us today, definitely, but it never changes. And our, our world is changing daily. Uh, and I, I mean, this this equality bill, you know, I, I saw that <clears throat> Manchin, I think is his name, he's some Democrat, that, that he said he's not gonna vote for this equality bill unless a, a number of Republicans get on board with it too. And 
Well, good for him. I, I'm glad he has a little bit of a conscience in this because the this equality bill is making less than 1% of our population of 330 some million people or whatever it is now, it's somewhere around there, less than 1% of these people consider themselves transgender. And we are we are trying to say that they are normal. They're they're not normal. Look, they have they have some serious mental issues going on in their lives and <clears throat> they need they need help. They they need spiritual help, they need physical help. I mean to to mutilate your body that that is not natural. And <clears throat> but we have that <clears throat> and we have this this government that is trying to change everything that that uh, stands for God. And and we just see the, the battles every day. Well, I'm grateful that the foundation of God stand assured. And, and it's always the same. God is always the same. And so let's let's um, live by that and, and live with that courage in our in our lives, right? So and then I was reading and now I'm jumping again. All right. So that, that was just an extra thought. Okay. So we, we need to be content with what we have. That was one point. But then I get into 1 Kings chapter 20, and, and here, Benadad, he was the king of Syria, and he was not a nice guy. And Benadad was an evil guy, and uh, uh, he, he made war with Ahab. Ahab was king of Israel. Ahab was not a nice guy, and neither one of them were following the Lord at all. And while well, they get into battle, and... and uh, Ahab, God tells Ahab, I'm going to give you victory to show you that I have control of things and that you need to get your heart right and you need to, to bring this nation to serve me and walk with me. And I'm going to show you that I'm in control of this and I will give you victory over Benadad. So they go into battle and, and they beat they beat the Syrians and Benadad severely. And Benadad hides out. They find him and they bring him to Ahab and and Benadad uh, begs for his life, all right? And so, <clears throat> look, he should have killed him. That's what God wanted him to do. You, you destroy those nations and, and, and destroy those that are going to bring you down from worshiping him. And, but he doesn't. And he makes a pact with him and he makes an oath with him and lets him live. Well, when he does that, God's not happy. Well, God speaks to Ahab through prophets. He, he uh, uh, Ahab wasn't privileged enough to, to be able to talk to God personally, okay? There were men of God that did, and, and some of these prophets did, but he spoke to Ahab through a prophet. Well, this prophet, so here's what it says. And, and so he's made that deal with Benadad. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor in the word of the Lord, Smite me, I pray thee, and the man refused to smite him. He said, so hit me. I want you to punch me. And, and another prophet, and <clears throat> this prophet <clears throat> said, uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to hit you. Then said he unto him, because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. I, I just, you know, as as a pastor, I need to be obedient. I need to, as a believer, I need to be obedient. As a pastor, I need to be obedient. I and and I believe that God holds a a higher standard for for pastors. I do. I, I think that we need to be an example of obedience. Do we still fail at times? Yes, and but we better be quick at confessing our sin and and getting it right. God. God had no patience with disobedience. And here we see that that uh, uh, he, he was killed because he wouldn't, all he did is he just wouldn't hit the other guy. And, and did the guy want to be hit? No, I'm sure he didn't. But he knew this is what God said to do, so you need to go do it. And, and he didn't, and so he died. And then, then he went to the next guy and said, hit me. So that guy hit him. And then he goes to the king dressed in and uh, uh, dressed in ashes on his face and and uh, uh, tells the king wh what's going on and because you didn't take Benadad's life it's your life for his life and you're going to die and so 
here we, we see that, and the king of Israel went to his house heavy and displeased and came to Samaria. So uh, we, we just, we need to be, we need to be obedient. And, and then we also need to be courageous because I was reading on over in second Kings then and got into chapter one and, and uh, here was uh, Elijah and, and uh, Ahaziah had, had fallen and, and hurt himself severely and so he wanted to know if he was going to live or not. So he, he sent his messengers out to uh, uh, appeal to Beelzebub, the, the god of Ekron. So to Satan, all right? And to this god that Ekron was, was worshiping, he said, hey, I want you to go out and ask Beelzebub if, if I'm going to live or not. Well, the messengers go out to uh, find Beelzebub, the, the idol, and they run into Elijah. And Elijah told him, because you have, because the king has done this, he's going to die. And so turn around and and go back and, and tell him this. So they went and and the king said, so who is this man and what, kind, what manner of man is he? And they said, he was a hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. And so... Here Isaiah, then he, he's hearing these things and and uh, he's the son of Ahab, okay? Ahab has finally died and now Ahaziah is going just like his dad did and ungodly and and so he sends out 50 men to bring him back. So these 50 men find him up on a hill, they walk up the hill and Elijah said, if I'm the man of God, you guys will die and they died. So the king sends another 50 men same thing happens, they die. Sends another 50 men. Now, by this time, the leader of these men is like, man, this is crazy. And so he goes and, and, and is very humble and, and asks, he says, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these 50 of thy servants be precious in thy sight. And he said, okay, I'll let you live. And, and uh, he said, and I'll go with you. And, and here's why. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, go down with him. Be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. I'm sorry. I've got to find this phone. There's always somebody trying to mess with us. So he goes down and and he went to the king. And he told him, hey, you, you went to Beelzebub, you're going to die. And that's exactly what happened. And he died. And so we need to be content. We need to be obedient. We need to be courageous in our faith and tell people the truth. And people don't like to be told the truth, but it's okay. We still need to tell them the truth. We can tell it to them in love, but we still need to tell them the truth and we need to tell them what the word of God says. And then 2 Kings chapter two, uh, Elijah is going to be taken up in the chariot of fire. <clears throat> and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Eli Elisha, Terry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. So they go to Bethel and there's the sons of the prophets were there and, and they came forth to Elisha and they said, hey, don't you know that today is the day that Elijah is gonna get taken away? And Elisha said, yeah, I know that. And so you can be quiet and, and you, you, you don't need to be telling me this. I already know this, right? And so uh, uh, Elijah told Elisha, hey, why don't you tarry here and stay? And as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho and so then uh, they're, they're at Jericho, and uh, uh, here Elijah tells Elisha again, stay here. And Elisha says, no, I, as, as the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And so, I mean, they, so finally Elijah says, okay. So they come to the river, and Elijah takes his mantle and opens up the water and he and Elisha walk across. And then Elisha, and, and Elijah said, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit 
be upon me. And he said, Thou hast a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And, and it came to pass as they went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And then get this part. And Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two places. I mean, this is powerful to me. I, so here we need to be committed, okay? He was committed to follow Elijah. He was committed to stay in, in what he was told to do. And God had called him to do this and be with Elijah uh, all the way to the end. And he did and he stayed and he was committed to that. We, we need to be committed to the Lord too. And, and when we are, then we get to see things. We get to see such a glory of God. We, we get to see such a, a, a blessings that we would never see before. And, and here he, he got a glimpse. Elisha got a glimpse of heaven. And what did it do? It brought him to himself to realize who he was. And, and and cries out to his, uh, you know, to the Father God, and and uh, he rin, rin, uh, you know, rins his own clothes, and and uh, truly uh, saw and, and understood uh, who he was, and what a blessing it was. But he'd have never had that if he didn't stay committed. But he stayed committed, and and we need to do that. And then I, I get on over a little further. Be respectful. It says in, in verse 23, Elisha now is on his own. He's crossed back over the waters. He opened the waters as, as Elijah did with the mantle. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him, said unto him, go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear 40 and two children of them. He went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he returned to Samaria. And God wants respect, and we better be respectful. And we're in a society now, there's no respect. There's no sanctity. There's no sanctity of life. There's no sanctity of faith. There's no respect of God and any of that, but we need to be. And we need to set that example and, and make sure that we are truly being the example that, that God wants us to be. And, and in that, we need to realize that God's always watching us. And uh, so be content, be obedient, be courageous, be committed, be respectful, and, and, and really be confident because of who God is. In Psalm 139, the Lord gave David this, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compass my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before Laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. He goes on down, verse 17. He says, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. And then he says, do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against me? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God, God knows us. God loves us. And so be confident in that. Be confident in being a child of God and, and, and just do what it is that you're supposed to do and, and learn to say no to, to the things in this world and to the pressures that the world wants to give us. And and just stand and, and be righteous and, and walk and, and be joyful and praise the Lord. And, and it, it's just powerful. It's powerful to know that. And then be a man of character. That's the last thing in Acts 13. Here we see that 
uh, Paul goes in and he's preaching in the synagogues and and it says, and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And so there were many that they, they were, they were uh, witnessing to, and many of them trusted Christ as their Savior. And, and then it goes on and the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. I mean, the, the, when, when the pressure came, Paul and Barnabas just kept preaching the word and, and became even bolder in, in what they were doing. And instead of doing what the, the bullies thought they would do, they did just the opposite. You know how we ought to uh, do that. And, and so, uh, and, and Paul makes a statement for, so hath the Lord commanded us saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And, and then it goes on down. The Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women, uh, uh, women and the chief men of the city and, and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook off the dust off their feet against them and came unto Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Th that's character. You know, we, we just we just need to stand and uh, be what God wants us to be in this crazy world because, yeah, there's going to be those that, that are against us, but there are also going to be those that are listening. And there are going to be those that trust Christ as their Savior. There are going to be those that are believers that are going to come out of that closet and say, yeah, I need to be bold in my faith and, and walk in my faith. And, and so let's do that. So that's the Monday challenge today. So God bless you guys and uh, Lord bless and uh, have a great day today.